Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash citizenho. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hello there. Hola. And welcome to episode 96. Yeah, I believe so. 96 of Citizen 96! <laughs> I should have lots more energy this week because it's not 11 o'clock at night. Is that four full days now? What do you mean four? What? 96 hours is oh, four. Four full days worth of us babbling nonsense. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> sure. I think our listeners need to rethink their lives. Why are you telling them this? I think our listeners are wonderful people. Exactly. And they lead rich, full lives, and they should continue doing exactly what they've been doing. We have a captive... And convince others to do the same. We have a captive audience today. She's not even paying attention to us. Exactly. (laughs) So, yeah, we're recording in our uh, Midtown West studio, which may be an infrequent place. Uh, Okay, whatever. (laughs) We're We're trying it. (laughs) Scott's office, since the the Upper West Side studio is no more. The evil landlords have evicted us. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Did you tell her I said that? (laughs) No. No, I did not. I think she'd find it funny. Yeah. She'd just think it was silly. Your dad would probably get amused by it. Your dad would probably agree with me. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) Uh, So, how's it feel to be, like, at Bronx site for eight days? (laughs) Is it? Yeah, well, this is, yeah, this is day eight. Uh, yeah. Much longer commute, I will say that. But, yeah, we're still unpacking and unpacking and unpacking. That's like the job that never ends. I feel like I unpacked quicker than you guys did for some reason. Uh, I, have a lot more, I also have a lot more space to put stuff out of the way. Yours, it might feel that our, I mean, our biggest problem is that we have a lot of bins that are things that were in the wall unit in the old place and we we really we just we had to sort of keep them out of the way we couldn't necessarily get at them because the workers the workmen were still working in that area and we were concentrating on unpacking our clothes so we got that done that was sort of the priority that in the kitchen so we got that done and the kitchen is functional even though it's not uh it's not the neatest place yet because there's still a bunch of junk on the countertops, but we're, it's getting better. It's improving. When we moved in, we didn't have a bedroom set yet. So what okay. we did is we had – I had that – remember that armoire I had in um, Forest Hills? Yeah. That big-ass yeah. heavy thing? Yeah. We didn't take that with us to que- uh, Jersey. Okay. What did you do with it? You just left it on the street? We brought it to the garbage room in the building. Yeah. So okay. what told me to do. So um, what we did is we took Marissa's dresser, had that in our bedroom, and then I had that little bookshelf, which is in my office now. Uh-huh. That's where I kept my clothes, that I like a small amount of clothes, and then the rest of my clothes were in the basement. Yeah. I mean, luckily, our the closets were all installed, so we were able to get all of our clothes unpacked. And then, you know, we also – but we also had to sort of leave space in the front in our bedroom open because we needed to – they still needed to install the uh, – the built-in closet in there, which is done now. So you have to send me a picture of that later. Oh, uh, okay. Our so, listeners want to see it too. So we'll I'm sure. It. I'm sure they they care about the large white behemoth in the front of my bedroom. <laughs> Tweet us at Citizen Hopod with hashtag large white, white, white behemoth. behemoth. <laughs> it is. It's a big unit, but it'll it'll hold a lot of stuff, which is good. You said unit. <laughs> 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 um. So yeah, we're. Uh, We'll unpack more stuff and shift some things around, and that'll create more space. And then we have our big front closet, which is going to hold a lot of the stuff that was in the wall unit anyway. Yeah. Like in, in our basement, I have all those shelves where I have all the, That's where all my clothes was at first. Right. Okay. Uh, you know yeah, what? I vaguely I'm, remember that. Where you have then, all your, like, where you have all kinds of appliances and stuff now. No, no, no. Not, not when you walk down the stairs. The closets. Oh, oh, okay. All my clothes were in the closets there. And then I would bring up what I needed for the week and move stuff around. Yeah. Until we got the bedroom set. Which yeah, I you said, guys may also have just had less stuff. We had a lot of crap. <laughs> I, we also threw out a lot before we moved. Yeah. I mean, we Don't forget, a... you guys were also living there. Marissa and I, we were in that apartment, what, three years? I was yeah, you guys weren't there that long. We were, in that, we were in that apartment for eight years together. 
Yeah, that's true. And also, I had places to store stuff, like that whole storage over the basement. Yeah. <laughs> we had basically everything in the apartment. And, yeah. I mean, we we have a, like, we have a lot of the bins emptied, and I should be able to get a bunch more emptied out uh, between tonight and tomorrow. Then it's just, uh, yeah, a few more things, which I'll work my way through as much as I can. How's the noise? The noise, I mean... It's not really that bad. It, mm. Nobody's even commented about it. Oh, no, I'm talking about the outside noise. Yeah, I know. Oh. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> because we're right on a, we're right on the service road for a highway, but... But you're kind of like... You're not really facing the we're, highway. You're kind of facing the corner. No, the, the living room... Yeah, kind of. But the living room does face the highway. Max's room does face the highway, kind of. Um, but... We are set back a little bit, and also we we don't have any window treatments on yet, so yeah. we got to get that done. How old are the windows? I would assume they're originals. I don't really know. If you wanted to redo the windows, would you have to get the co-op's permission? Yeah, I'd have to get the co- I'd have to get You'd it ha- approved by the co-op, especially because it's something that would adjust the look of the outside. You probably have certain but windows. There are, you can get. there are there are these soundproofing things that you can put over the windows on the inside that shouldn't affect any that mm. nobody should care about, and we can do that to soundproof it more. The down, one downside is that when you put them in, you can't really open the windows again. You have to take these things off to be able to open the windows. That's irritating. But they also they have like sound deadening curtains. I found out so. Well, like you said, it's not even that bad. No, not really, especially not at night. And you know, in the morning, you start hearing it more. And but it's again, it's just it's, it's all always going to happen. When, it's just going to be loud when your mother in law's over. It's all cars going by. It's just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. it's not really that big big of a deal. I mean, it's certainly quieter than what we had in Manhattan. So and my wife's getting her hair done. She's like going to be a lot. Getting products too. This is what I need for my hair, though. My hair costs us nothing. <laughs> or your lack of hair costs exactly. you nothing. You could use a haircut. Yeah, it's getting to be about that time. I figure I'll try and do one like sometime next week, probably late in the week. Before Maybe you go Friday. To Florida. Before we go to Florida. That be the plan. Not And try not to commit matricide. Yeah, we'll see. Well, hopefully you and your father-in-law can play golf three or four times a day. <laughs> I wouldn't say three or four times a day, but I'm sure we'll play uh, two or three times while we're down there. It's my guess. Mm-hmm. I, I told my mom, like, while they're down there, you should see them. I'm like, oh, we're already planning on it. <laughs> oh, I, I have no – I wouldn't be surprised if – they were if she was planning something with my mother in law for them to come up or for us to go down there. Yeah. If not, I was gonna say, "Hey, we're gonna borrow the car and we're gonna go see your parents." Because <laughs> I figured, why not? <laughs> your mother thinks of me as another son anyway. She would give me a ton of guilt if I didn't go see her while I was down. But there. But I think she considers Melissa more of a daughter than you of a son. Eh, no, I'd say it's kind of a combination <laughs> of the two. <laughs> She's she's basically adopted us without us even without us ever losing our parents. Well, the best way to know she likes you is she'll tell you to do stuff without asking. Yeah, that and she's given me permission to to slug you many times. But if you do go to their place, be prepared to do work. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, she'll probably have me do whatever things that uh, stuff that your dad can't help with. Yeah, we'll, we'll be down there two weeks later. So okay, so they can wait. <laughs> She's Jewish. She can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if we'd go down. Uh, well, I'm, I'll see what, what yeah. your mother and my mother-in-law have, have uh, planned. She may have like a bunch of people over or something. Yeah. Oh, I'm, well, my mother-in-law, I'm sure will. I'm sure she'll have a barbecue and let a bunch of people come to see Max and all <coughs> that, all that good stuff. Uh, how is the boy? He's okay. He's, you know, he, he's he's got a lot of changes to process right now, mm-hmm. so. He's going through puberty we'll already? No, not those changes. <laughs> he's just been uprooted from the only home he's ever known in a different school from the only one he's ever known. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Poor beef. So. Hey, if he could do it, so could Baron Trump. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he can. <laughs> Well, what's the, they were going to like finish out the school year yeah. here, and then they were going to move to D.C. probably. Yep. Hey, we made it nine minutes before we mentioned Trump. That might be a personal record. 
<coughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But we didn't actually mention Trump. We only mentioned his son. Mm, true. Granted, he is a Trump also, but we're not talking about the Trump. <laughs> trying to figure out why those lights are flashing on that building over there. On what building? The one that's oh, under construction. I just saw lights flashing. Those, those could be fire alarm strobes. Hmm. Possibly. Ah. You swamp man. Last man he don't get. Yeah, that's how it goes. Oh, I'm tired today. Oh, you're tired. I've been having trouble sleeping the last couple of days. I, I just, for whatever strange reason, I wake up at like 5 in the morning right now. Okay. Maybe it's just the new place. I don't know. I've been full. You know what's weird? You know where I actually sleep the absolute best, but I can never sleep out again? Uh, where? My room in Port Jeff. Oh. Like, I, I hadn't slept there in a while. Well, granted, this was a bunch of years ago. I, you know, I would wake up. I went to my room in Port Jeff, and I slept to like 1030. <laughs> <laughs> it's quiet. It's dark. It's... I guess. I'm surprised. It, but I'm surprised you don't sleep that, well, because it's quiet at your house in Jersey, so. I don't know what it is. It's just there was something about that room. No, I don't know. Actually, I mean, I well, I can't, I every time I'm out there uh, now, my niece and nephew sleep in my old room, so <laughs> it is not available for me to sleep in. Plus, uh, there's no place for Melissa to really sleep unless she sleeps in a different bed mm-hmm. on the other side of the room, and she probably wouldn't want to do that. Well, I don't think you can sleep at my parents' house, considering it's not their house anymore. Oh, okay, at their old house in Long Island, <laughs> no. At their place in Florida, yeah, I could sleep on the futon if you're not there, but. <laughs> Did I tell you what happened last week? You said something about your mother called you. Be- oh, what was it? Because she couldn't figure out how to open the futon? It's 8.30 in the morning. I'm on the train. My phone rings. I think someone died. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're Jewish. We've been trained that if your mother calls you very early in the morning or very late at night, somebody <laughs> died. Do you disagree with the statement? Uh, there's definitely some level of truth to it. <laughs> So I, I, I couldn't take the call because I was like literally in the tunnel and I had no service. I call up. What's wrong? I can't close the futon. I'm in 1,300 miles away. What the fuck do you want me to do? <laughs> uh, give her instructions on how to close the futon. That's what. I said you have to pull, pull push, and pull. <laughs> Hell, I don't know what that means. Well, it's um, there's a dowel in it. That yeah. locks when it goes down, so so it won't go up while you're sleeping on it. Right. So you have to pull it towards you to pull, get the dowel out of the notch. Yeah, then it can okay. go up, and then it can go back to become a couch again. <laughs> ah. And then there's a like a little um, bar underneath it that locks it. So when you're sitting it, you can't. It won't fall. It down. won't slide back. Okay. Pull, push, and pull. I may get a hell. I may get a futon for my office room at some point. So. Yeah, like the one I have. Yeah, or something the, like that. Well, you have the guest, or you could get a bigger couch and move that couch into the bedroom. Or maybe a little. Maybe small. I, I have to. I'd have to do measurements and see. I mean, what we're what we're planning on probably doing is going to the place where we got that couch and getting like a love seat that matches it to put e- either against the window wall or to sort or of divide the of a living space between the between the living space and dining space. Mm. So we'll see. So yeah, it'll be sort of like a sectional, but not a sectional. Gotcha. That works. Yeah, and maybe a, like a, another chair or something to put and a for... coffee table. Maybe I don't know. We still we have those ottomans, so I don't know what we're gonna do with all of it. But you don't we'll really drink coffee. Out. Yeah, we don't drink coffee. Well, Melissa does. I don't. Why is it called the coffee table? Was it because people used to sit there and drink coffee around? Maybe I have no idea. I never really thought much about it. Well, now I am. We have to figure this out. Tweet us hashtag. Why is it called the coffee table? No, that's too oh, long. Oh, God. Hashtag coffee table. Right. <laughs> or, you know, we could just look it up in Wikipedia later, which oh. is probably what you're going to do. Resist the internet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Still recording podcast. That's how it works. <laughs> you don't look shit up while recording. Oh, shit. Speaking of looking shit up, I did. Oh, God. What did you not do? Oh, you have to find a book. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. So you stop. never looked up a book. <laughs> Good God. I was kind of busy today. You know? How are we supposed to, you know, pay bills or anything? We're not even at that point in the show, and you're already delaying everything. Uh, fuck you. Shame, shame, you shame. shit-faced cockmaster. 
Ah, oh, and come on, I already talked all about my uh, moving status. Um, how about so, them? Yeah, the apartments. The apartments nice. We like it. It's nice to just have a place to put everything and not, you know, just have to clutter everything. Got a book. Like all the clutter that used to be in our bathroom actually has a place to fit in those cabinets. Yeah, cabinet those cabinets are. I still don't see why. In, in Max's bathroom, I think you need a medicine cabinet. Eh, maybe there is. There's a good amount of space in those drawers in yeah. the vanity. And what's the difference right now? It's just Max's bathroom, really. Slash sure. shared bathroom if people stay over. Shared. Uh, you have to go really badly, and Melissa has to use the bathroom. That too. Or if I'm in the kitchen anyway and I have to use the bathroom, I'll just go there because mm-hmm. it's closer. Yeah. I think for like the first six months we were in the house, we were both using the upstairs bathroom to get ready. And Marissa finally goes like, you need to use downstairs. <laughs> People think All it's I weird know. that I go downstairs to the basement every day. I'm like, hmm. Whatever. I'm doing it I, just say, I have to say I like having a master bathroom. It's, I said this once before, but I feel like I actually have like a grown-up bedroom now. Yeah. Whereas in the in the apartment on Seventy Second Street, hey, that was that was basically that was my bachelor pad that just got converted first to a young married couple pad and then to a young family pad. Well, the thing is, is you just had so much in that bedroom; it felt cluttered. Like I think it actually because you had so much stuff in there was it looked smaller than it was. Yeah, I mean, like to the some de- with the desk there in the corner, and then that built-in clo- that other closet you built in. Yeah, but I mean, well, that yeah, that closet was was a key thing to be able to hold all. Of melissa's stuff without it we would have never fit all that that closet is i used to have a computer desk where that closet. yeah i remember it was a big freaking desk too do you remember my old computer desk the one from port jeff yeah vaguely well it went from port jeff to uh, to state college to port no it was never in state college sorry but from port jeff to Jersey City to Forest Hills. <laughs> oh no! It went from sorry Port Jeff to Oneonta to Port Jeff to Forest. It was Stacy's desk in college. Oh. Port Jeff to Oneonta, back to Port Jeff, then to Jersey City, and then to Forest Hills, and then to the garbage room. Is what it sounds like because you didn't take it to your house. Correct. Because I bought so many that. things you threw out. No, well, we bought. I bought the desk I have now when we were in Forest Hills. Oh. Yeah, I may get a new computer desk. I have—I mean, the one I have actually is pretty nice, and my like we polished it up and cleaned it up. It it looks pretty good now, much better than it did before. So well, it's nice just having a separate room for the computer, you know. Oh yeah, and there's still a ton of space in there to put other furniture for you know for some of Max's toys, and I and I want to be able to set up the other computer that's going to be the the DVR and have that hooked up to a screen so that can function as a TV in that room. When we, you know, whenever we need to use it. Let me think. Um, like, even when I was in Forest Hills, my computer was always in the living room. Yeah, I mean, I just, I didn't really have any good, there was no good place the way we laid out the living and dining space there to oh, put you, a computer. Yeah. Like, with me, if you remember, it was like where that wall where the kitchen was. Yeah, vaguely. Sounds, that sounds familiar. You'd walk in, the kitchen was there. Oh, there right, was... right. Okay, now I remember. Because like if you were facing the TV, the computer desk was off to the right. Exactly, and that wall yeah. was the kitchen. Right. Okay. And then um, here I just brought it upstairs, but once I got the futon, I moved it against the wall. It used to be in the middle of the room. The desk. Yeah. Well, if I get a futon there, I'll put it up against the wall, and we'll figure it out. But we're not quite there yet. Yep. <laughs> let's finish unpacking. Yeah, let's finish unpacking first. I yeah. well, I technically I have to have all those bins empty by uh, Wednesday. next Wednesday, unless I pay them extra money to hold on to some bins longer, and then pay extra money again for another for another pickup. Oh jeez, when's the wall unit supposed to be done? Uh, it's probably going to take about two weeks, which means they might be able to install it while I'm in Florida, which would be convenient. Mm, great. <laughs> means we come back from Florida, boom, we have a wall unit. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> Okay, so you can't tell the community that construction's over yet? Uh, no, although I probably could get my move-in deposit back, although I do still have to lay out rugs, and we may have to get some more carpets or something. I don't know. Nobody's complained, to my knowledge, yet. So, mm. And again, we have the padding underneath the floor throughout the apartment. As long as the person below you doesn't complain, you're fine. Yeah. That's pretty much it. 
Yeah, exactly. And I mean, we, we try not to walk around the apartment in our shoes too much. So The only problem is you have a two-year-old running back and forth. Yeah, but we take his shoes off too. Yeah. Doesn't matter, trust me. Oh, um, look, I'm sure they still probably hear the... What you need to try to do, though, is try to get into your neighbor's apartments to see their floors. What do their floors have to do with it? See what, if they are fully carpeted or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, well, the, the next-door neighbors, I've been able to peek into their door a little bit. And, I mean, I can see exposed wood floor in their place. So I don't know how much because I just haven't really been that deep into the apartment. I've only peeked in through the front door. Have you cooked in the apartment yet? Yeah. I made dinner I made dinner Tuesday night and Wednesday night and last night. What's a record for you guys? <laughs> no, I've been doing that I've been doing that since Max was born. Even before that. We blew apron the last two weeks. We're not doing it this week. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah, ever since Max was born, I've I've cooked the Four days, pretty much four days a week, unless it was a th- unless you guys were coming on a Thursday and we were going out after recording. Otherwise, I cooked every day. Yeah, I'll usually cook Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll either do like a, something small. We're trying Fridays. Sometimes we'll barbecue. Yeah. See, we like Sundays. We'll just we usually just go out someplace locally or order something in, and keep it simple. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we cook at home. Fridays, traditionally, we had gone out. You know, we may still go out locally. Maybe then. invited to some Shabbos dinners. Maybe. I don't know. We have a mezuzah up now, so <laughs> they, they, they definitely know we're Jewish. Which, shit, reminds me. I meant to email my super something, and I forgot. And plus, and also potentially make a uh, a label for my front door at work because they have a label maker. Unless you have a label maker here. We do in the back, actually. We may, I may have to play with that later. I have to find it. <laughs> Well, see if you can find it, and hmm. then we'll go from there. If it doesn't take too long. What, to put on your front door? Yeah. To get my name on the front M-M-M-M door. M-M-M Kane? Probably just Kane. <laughs> Who's writing you? It was just an email about uh, my transportation benefit for the month going through or something. Yeah. Um, so wife got home okay last night also? Yes, she did. She mm-hmm. got home just fine. So I, I think she's I think she's gotten into the routine of it now. Does she like the area? You think? I think so. You know, it's again we're still all just, we're still just getting used to everything. Max is getting accustomed to a new school, so it'll I'll be. And I know he was fussy when she dropped him off this morning. I'll see how he was when she picked him up. Well, the funny thing is, um, Marissa grew up in the area where we live, and right. I, I think I know her my way around better than she does now. <laughs> Yeah, but she was never that good with directions in the first place. True. Well, she can get from A to B, but she only knows one way to do it. She can't deviate to figure it out. She doesn't understand how, like, things flow. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, well, my wife knows how to get places around where she where she grew up in Long Island, so. True. But she also, she kind of knows a certain way to do it. And yeah. That's sort well, of that's it. also because of, um, she probably hasn't driven much. Yeah. So she never really needed to. Mm. She was just taking places, but but she still I like she when especially when when we first started dating, she used to be able to direct me like in and out of their development and yeah. how to get places. And then over time, I just kind of learned my way. So, like I have a pathological need to know where I am at all times. It's one of my few idiosyncrasies. Like I always need to know which you? way. Is, fuck you. <laughs> I always need to know which way is north. Like I like knowing where I am, figuring it out. So if I'm going someplace that I haven't been before, I will study how to get there incessantly like, so that I know where I'm going when I get there. Aside from New York, cities where I've spent a decent amount of time, like I can get around Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, I, can, I okay. can get around, probably at this point, I can probably get around Chicago. Okay. I can get around London. Philly is still a little weird to me. I don't know why. Because I don't care enough to try to get around there. <laughs> No, I mean, well, I know how to get to and from my brother's house, and I mean, I know that I can. T- I know that I know how to take the trolley to and from Thirtieth Street Station. Although I'll probably never have to do that again. Trolley. Yep. Having the car a will be nice. Trolley system. Oh, having the car will be nice. I am looking forward to that. Let's get. Let's name the car. We're naming the car. Abe. Why? I don't think we need to. 
Abe. Yeah, I know. I know why. <laughs> what are you doing? Staring at a blank phone. Why? I don't know. You're a Riri. I'm kind of curious. Let's see. What time is it? Oh, it is about that time. Ooh. Yes, it is. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash citizenho where you can sign up for a free 30-day trial account and get a free audiobook download. There are thousands upon thousands of titles to choose from, such as this one that Pat Scott picked out just 10 minutes ago. And then I realized it's not a real audiobook, but Bedtime Stories for Cynics, Open House with Tony Hale by Nick Offerman, Tony Hale, and Gretchen Enders. Right. House shopping can be scary for buyers and sellers alike, especially if you're touring a house haunted by a history of failed relationships and your realtor is a creepy Tony Hale. What in the blue hell? Cut contains explicit content. It's only eight minutes long. You should play for Max tonight to go to sleep. Uh, no. I think we'll stick to reading him Good Night Train. <laughs> Good Night Train? Yes, there's a book called The Good Night Train. You read that every night? Not every night, but it, it's one of his, uh, it seems to be one of his preferred nighttime or bedtime books. Mm. What's your preferred one? I actually kind of like that one. Just because Some of those I books are it. painful to read. Oh, they're all, they're stupid, but that's what you, they're, they're <laughs> books for little children. I yeah. mean, what do you want? They're not going to be very complex stories. Does he get a story every night? Yeah, pretty much. Unless he's really tired. And he just like, passes out? Yeah. Has he been having trouble going down at all? Not really. I mean, actually, even last night, he, you know, but Melissa brought him in to to say good night to me, and then he, I think he sat next to me for a minute, and then Melissa just goes, "You want Daddy to take you to bed?" So mm-hmm. I said, "Okay, I'll bring him to bed." I brought him into the room, and as soon as he saw, like, I shut off the light. As soon as he saw his crib, he was like reaching to dive in. <laughs> he must have been tired. Um, I mean, he seemed awake at the moment, but I, he, he just he knew it was bedtime, so, mm-hmm. and he went right down, no problem. The other night, I fell asleep later than I wanted to because I've been able to sleep. Then I woke up about 4 a.m. having to pee. So I get up, and I bang my knee into the stupid bed trying to go around. Awesome. <laughs> As That's first, one of my problems is I've also I've been going to bed later than I probably should be because I have to get up earlier than I used to to go to work. Ugh. But I'm still going to bed at about the same time because I'm just spending time you know, going through stuff. That, testing out the... Uh, the wired network, try, you know, checking out transfer speeds and so far to, so good. I woke Marissa up for like six seconds, then I kept going. <laughs> yeah, good times. When I get when I get the uh, the new bed frame and headboard, we'll see what happens. But which side of the bed are you on? I am on the right side of the bed. Right side facing it or right side laying on it? Right side laying on it. So, so you'll have to side. walk around to go to the bathroom. I will have to walk around to go. Well, to the not bathroom. necessarily. Yeah, if I climb over Melissa. No, you go to the other bathroom. Or I could go to the other bathroom. It's probably about an equidistant walk. Um, I feel like the other one's a little bit further, but I have done that just because, like, okay, I don't want to wake Melissa up by flushing the toilet, which would then be right behind her, so yeah. i just go out to the other one. Yes, but she wouldn't have that consideration. She would just go right to the bathroom and say, Oh, oh. she does. Yeah. <laughs> she always did. Like, even in the old place, she used to, she used to get up, open the door, to the, from the bedroom to, out in the hallway and then turn on the light in the bathroom so then it would shine into the bedroom. <laughs> oh, she would turn on the light before... Yeah, opening. or she'd turn on the light in the hallway. <laughs> this was before Max. Did you used to complain? I would. I was like, why'd you do that in the middle of the night? So I could see. woke me up. <laughs> but I couldn't see. Yeah, but find a way to do, close the door to the bedroom so it doesn't wake me up. <laughs> She doesn't get that stuff. Marissa's yeah. gotten better. She used to be like, when she would wake up, she would like throw her arms out and like intentionally try to wake me up or something like that. Oy, oy, oy. See, st- yeah, stuff like that would just piss me off. And I just and uh, as it is, it used to be when I would fall asleep on the couch, mm-hmm. like she would come and wake me up because she needed. Like that's when she decided she needed she was going to do something on the computer and she needed help with it. <laughs> so then I've just woken up. I'm cranky. You're gotta, always cranky. And now I gotta, you know, now I gotta show her how to do something on the computer because she decided to wait until eleven thirty at night to do it. <laughs> well, she goes to sleep late too. Oh, she does. Yeah, she does. Although I, I think she she tends to fall asleep earlier now than she used to. Also, so we both do because dealing with a little kid can be tiring. And he's been getting up earlier. No, he's been sleeping later. No, oh. um, I think today. Yeah, he was. He was still asleep when I left for work today too. Same thing happened yesterday. 
Impressive. So we'll see how he does tomorrow, too. What time do you Sometimes leave? Sometimes he gets up and then he goes back down, too. So What time do you leave? Um, A little bit before 7. I catch it. Basically, my goal is to catch a 7 o'clock bus across the street. And that gets you in around 8 o'clock? That gets me to work at like 8.05, 8.10. If Marsha asks, 8 o'clock. Oh, what I've told her is that it takes an hour and change. I say an hour, an hour, five minutes, maybe 10. That's what I tell her. She's, and she's like, oh, so it's not an hour and 15 or an hour and a half? I said, no. I, I, it was never going to be an hour and 15 or an hour and a half. Maybe an hour and 15. But well, if there's a major problem, then it'll be an hour and a half. If there's a problem, then it could take longer. I mean, there was a little bit of a problem this morning. Something happened with the doors on the train. At, uh, we were stuck at 215th Street for like five minutes. But then they, they had the train skip some stops on the way down. So. I mean, you it went from there's, Dykeman there's, to 100. You could always take a, You could always, ta- if you had to, take the express bus. I could, if, but the express bus is actually the express bus would take an hour and a half. No, no, I'm saying, but like, in a, if like you know, oh, the like subway if the trains shut- are completely shut down for some reason. Then, I mean, yes, yeah. you could work from home too. Yeah, I could work from home. I could take an express bus. I could also take local buses down into Inwood or Washington Heights and pick up the train down there. True. Too. There are there are options. There's also the nuclear option. What? Get the car and drive to work. Oh God, no! That would be awful. On way too many levels. I don't, it may not be as bad as you think. I mean, the way I would go is just take the Henry Hudson to Wall Street. Yeah, I can do that, but you, that those that road gets pretty crowded after seven in the morning. Mm. I've done that. I I've stopped. I only drive in if I absolutely have to because the Lincoln Tunnel in the mornings is just awful. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If I absolutely had to, yeah, I could drive, but I, my preference is to avoid it if I can. Once we have the car, assuming it's all settled, I can uh, potentially drive. drive so are you gonna are you gonna get the spot first before you go out to Setauket, or no? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out there. I have to bring the car there, and then it's just gonna be whatever it is. It is at that point. Mm. If I have to, I can park it on the street for a while, or I mean, maybe always... I, if nothing else, maybe I can call this guy and he can uh, he can get me set up in a, at another garage up there or something. I don't know. This is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. What? That they don't know what's going on. Because they're, they're, these are they're garage attendants. They're not they're, these guys aren't rocket science scientists. True, but you think if the website, I don't. Know. You would think that they would get a notice about it beforehand, but they don't. So the, and if they don't get the notice about it, they know nothing. Cray cray. Yeah. More like stew stew. Yes, it's getting dark. It's 6.30 in March. Lousy smart weather. It is dark at 6.30 in March. Not next week. Is next week when the clocks change? Next weekend. Already? I thought ours were later. Oh, wait, no. Ours jump ahead earlier than the than the UK. That's right. This is the one of the lasting things left from George W. Bush. He moved it a week out in each direction. No, it was like two weeks or something, wasn't yeah. it? Because it used to be the same time that, that, that like Europe changed. Well, 49 states will be changing next week. Oh, yes. Fuck you, Arizona. Why? What do you care? I don't know. Why do we still do it? I don't know why we still do it. We, I mean, it's something that we didn't even start doing until relatively recently. Yeah, it's supposed to maximize the daylight during a wake hour, so you don't wake up in the dark and stuff like that. Or for it was supposedly, I always heard it was for farmers, so they could be up earlier or something like that with the lights because they didn't want to get up at a time and um, they didn't want to get up and have it be dark. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's because right now we are on standard time. So. Yeah. We're switching to daylight. Switch to daylight time on uh, whatever day it is. It's like the 13th or something like that. Yeah, it seems about right. Okay, Google. When uh, do we switch for daylight savings time? Actually, you know, it's not daylight savings time. It's daylight saving time. It's daylight saving time at 2 a.m. on the second Sunday in March and reverts to standard time on the first Sunday in November. I always thought it was daylight savings. Nope, it's daylight saving time. Wow. It's the um, 12th, March 12th. Okay. 
Sure. So Purim is during daylight saving. Okay. Now we're less of, uh, of getting Vishnikid. <laughs> Aww. You're supposed to get that just, mean, that just means that it's going to be that much harder to wake up with a hangover the next morning. <laughs> or that much easier. <laughs> or or you're already awake. No, is there two 2 a.m.? Two this... uh, we lose an hour. Yeah, we lose an hour. So at 2 a.m. it becomes 3 a.m. Yeah. N- November is the one where there's two 2 a.m.s. Uh, at 2 a.m. Yeah. it goes back to 1 a.m. Yes. That's, That's the best bar night of the year. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It is, but but who the oh wait no because it's Saturday night so yeah. I still think they should move it to Friday night. So you have the whole weekend to adjust. Exactly. Yeah. Eh. Whatever. I don't care. It's been this way my whole life. I'm used to it. It doesn't affect me. It just is. In college, I think I was always up when it happened. <laughs> yes, but that was college. Being up till two in the morning was a normal occurrence. If I'm up to 2 a.m., like, I'm either sick, I can't sleep, or, like, something going. Yeah. Or a really crazy party night. Which Has Max ever really kept really... you up all night? No. I mean, when he when he was a newborn, when he first came home, there were a few times, you know, I mean, it was, you got limited sleep because he woke up so frequently. But, and then there were, especially when he was sleeping in the room with us. Mm. You know, just because we heard him shifting around in the coast. Wasn't he in there for like a week or something? It was like two weeks. After two weeks, we said, all right, we're done. <laughs> no more. We're putting you in the crib. Good thing I told you you should have kept the um, bassinet. Why? I'm kidding. For something that we used for two weeks? The two big weeks. big expensive bassinet? Or something that cost everybody nothing? Hmm. Was your mother-in-law flipping out when you took him out of there for two after two weeks? Um, I don't know if we told her that quickly. <laughs> I think by the time we did tell her, he was already in the uh, crib. In the crib, and it's like, yeah, he slept fine. Okay. <laughs> I think she did. And like, is he going to be okay out there? Like, yeah, he's fine. <laughs> don't forget, he was also by the time he came home, he was already a month old, three weeks old, right? Uh, he was two and a half weeks. We we took him. He was out of the NICU after two and a half weeks. So he, that's basically at his fifth week old, which is usually when people take him out of the bassinet anyway. About, over about a month to six weeks is when people do it. So yeah. it actually wasn't that and short. And that's another is why some people keep their kids in bassinets for much longer, but I don't understand. And, yeah. But for, if most people do we know it after, after a month or two. Why would you spend all that money on something that you're barely going to use? It doesn't make sense to me. I would just put like a pile of sheets on the floor. Yeah, no, it's that's not going to cut it. <laughs> sheets could suffocate the kid. Uh, how about an egg crate? No. Trust me. If you if you if you guys have a kid, if you want to borrow our co sleeper, I'm sure you can, <laughs> unless somebody else needs it. <laughs> We know people... Uh, it's actually not even our co-sleeper. It's my brother's co-sleeper. He still wouldn't care. No, he wouldn't care because they have no use for it anymore. <laughs> As my sister-in-law says, that store is closed. <laughs> uh, so, you're going to have a car. I'm going to have a car. I have I, a car. I have my. I have a big apartment with a master bedroom and stuff now. I have a mortgage. You have a- Shit, I became an adult. <laughs> it only took you 38 years. Yeah. <sighs> is your auto payment finally working? Uh, yeah. Well, I haven't actually turned it on for auto payment, but it is working that I can make the payment uh, through their site and it pulls from the right account. So that's all set. One of my one of my friends from college who listens to us just got a new apartment, and she was leery about going to Wells Fargo because of what you said. because of my experience. <laughs> yeah. And rightfully so, all things considered, with Wells Fargo lately. <laughs> what did I miss? Oh, the layoffs. No, not the just all the the all the stuff that's been going on. Well, I mean, the layoffs are related to it, I guess. Oh, you're talking about where they the fake accounts and stuff. Yeah, the fake oh. accounts. That was like six course. months ago. I know, but just in general, what's been going on with them? <sighs> but whenever. can you automate your maintenance payment? Um. Yeah, I think I can actually. As as everything gets settled, I'm going to automate more of that stuff. But you know, my mortgage gets pulled every month. 
where they have with my synagogue dues. Um, as we're recording this on Shabbos. <laughs> yeah. Shame, shame, shame. So the director emails me. He's like, your last two payments didn't come through. I'm like, really? Because the funds were there. He said, account not found. Did you change anything? I'm like, no. Their system, all of a sudden, I checked with Bank of America. And they're like, no, we never got it. Or, there was no rejection or anything. We just never got hit. Yeah, that, that's what happened with Wells Fargo is it never went to Citibank. They never got hit. But this was working for 18 months and all of a sudden stopped working. Yeah. Well, that I, that I couldn't explain. No, the director's a good guy. He's like, this is weird. I've already... Yeah, then so they, you then, fixed they, it. then they, they fixed it, and then it happened again. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck, how much money do I owe the synagogue now? <laughs> nah, they're cool. They yeah, just... That'll be another uh, another project, finding a synagogue. Go to the ones that they have Jews at. Thanks, they all have Jews. Go to the one with the hottest chicks. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Go to the one where Melissa feels the most comfortable. That's basically what it boils down to. <laughs> Which probably won't be your neighbors for the Nagog. I don't think so. <laughs> but on that note, I've had enough talk about religion. Is it time to talk about a different kind of religion? Yes. The, the religion, religion of Jedi. Jedi. The religion of movies? You say tomato, I say Jedi. I didn't say tomato. So we start off this week with contemporary color. In the summer of 2015, legendary musician David Byrne staged an event at Brooklyn's Barclays Center to celebrate the art of color guard. We read synchronized this. dance routines. We read well. this last week. We did because I'm like, didn't was your sister involved in this? Why would my sister? Oh. <laughs> Barclays Center. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, fine. We'll just skip that. Before I fall, starring Zoe Deutsch, Jennifer Beals, Halston she, I Sage. She was dead. Halston Sage and Logan Miller. What if you had only one day to change absolutely everything? Samantha Kingston has everything. The perfect friends, the perfect guy, and a seemingly perfect future. Then everything changes. Dun, dun, dun. After one fateful night, Sam wakes up with no future at all. Trapped reliving the same day over and over, she begins to question just how perfect her life really was. As she begins to untangle the mystery of a life suddenly derailed, she must also unwind the secrets of the people closest to her and discover the power of a single day to make a difference. Not just in her own life, but in the lives of those around her. Before she runs out of time for good. Didn't I already see this and wasn't it called Groundhog Day? I was thinking the same thing. Rodden. Yeah. Hmm. Logan. Hugh Jackman. I'm going to be cutting it close to get you if you make it a long pro- Make it. It is a long process. What? Oh, Marissa. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Logan. Right. Hugh Jackman. Patrick Stewart. Boyd Holbrook. And Stephen Merchant. In the near future, a weary Logan cares for an ailing Professor X in a hideout on the Mexican border. But Logan attempts to hide from the world, and his legacy are upended when a young mutant arrives, being pursued by dark forces. I'm going to go dun, fresh dun. on this, because I've heard good things about does it. Does this have something to do... It, it's I X-Men. Feel, yeah, I know that. But does this have something to do with, like, Wolverine's daughter or something? It's not his daughter. Uh, it's his okay. female clone. All righty, then. Fine. I'm going to go fresh on this, because... I think these just generally are good. Well, the last, the last two Logan movies weren't that good, but this one looks good. All right. Next, we have Table 19, starring Anna Kendrick, Amanda Crewe, Wyatt Russell, and Lisa Kudrow. Oh, Amanda Crewe. Yeah, isn't she in uh, um, Silicon, Silicon Valley? Valley? Which comes back in six weeks. Woohoo! Okay. Ex-maid of honor Eloise, Anna Kendrick, having, having been relieved of her duties after being unceremoniously dumped by the best man via text, decides Wait, what? To- <laughs> Decides to hold her head up high and attend her oldest friend's wedding anyway. She finds herself seated at the random table in the back of the ballroom with a disparate group of strangers, most of whom should have known to just send regrets, but not before sending something nice off the registry. As, as everyone's secrets are revealed, Eloise learns a thing or two from the denizens of Table 19. Friendships and even a little romance can happen under the most unlikely circumstances. This actually sounds like it could be kind of entertaining. Maybe, but uh, I don't know. I'm going to go fresh. I'm going to go rotten on it. I like Anna Kendrick. The last word. Amanda Seyfried, Shirley MacLaine, Anne Heche, Philip Baker Hall. Shirley MacLaine plays a retired businesswoman who wants to control everything around her, including her own obit. So she writes her own to ensure her life story is told her way. Amanda Seyfried portrays a young writer at a local newspaper who takes up the task of finding out the truth about MacLaine's character. 
resulting in a weaker a reawakening of passion for McLean's character and a life-altering friendship for Seyfried's. Okay, then. I'm going to go fresh. Okay, I'll go fresh on that. Next, The Shack. Da, da, da. Starring Sam Worthington, Rada Mitchell, Octavia Spencer, and Graham Greene. The Shack takes us on a father's uplifting spiritual journey. <clears throat> After suffering a family tragedy, Mac Phillips, Sam Worthington, spirals into a deep depression, causing him to question his innermost beliefs. Facing a crisis of faith, he receives a mysterious letter urging, hi- urging him to an abandoned shack deep in the Oregon wilderness. Despite his doubts, Mac journeys to the shack and encounters an enigmatic trio of strangers led by a woman named Papa, Octavia Spencer. Through this meeting, Mac finds important truths that will transform his understanding of his tragedy and change his life forever. That just sounds like a horse shit. I'm going rotten. Yeah, I'll go rotten on that one, too. Burlesque. 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 Heart, Heart of the Glitter Tree Bay. Tribe. Angelique Deville. Zora Von Pavanin. Babs Jamboree. <laughs> Stage Door Johnnies. <laughs> Okay, then. A documentary, a documentary feature about the passion and personalities of, at the heart of today's new wave of burlesque. On stage and in candid conversation, 12 of today's hottest performers reveal the naked truth about an exotic world where artifice is a route to authenticity and pretending to be someone else is the ultimate journey to become yourself. These burlesquers put it all on the line in performance that are sexy, funny, elegant, and outrageous. And they bear more than just their bodies as they discuss their artistic vision, their financial struggles, the misconceptions that infatuate them, and the community that sustains them. Booby cred? Yeah, okay, booby cred. And actually, probably documentary cred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, need to All righty. Next, Catfight. Starring Alicia Silverstone, Anne Heche, and Sandra O. Oh. Interesting Wealthy wine lover Veronica Salt, Sandra O, oh, and struggling outsider artist Ashley Chambers, Anne Heche, were close in college but haven't seen each other since. When they find themselves attending the same glitzy birthday party, verbal barbs lead to fisticuffs and an all-out brawl that will keep these two locked in combat for years to come. That just seems stupid. Yeah. Okay, rotten. Donald cried. Jess- Jesse Weekman, Chris Avedesian? Sure. In Donald Cried, Peter Latang, Jesse White Weekman, left working class Warwick, Rhode Island to reinvent himself as a slick Wall Street mover and shaker. Fifteen years later, when he's forced to return home to bury his grandmother, he loses his wallet on the trip. Stranded, the only person he can think of to help him out is his next door neighbor and former childhood friend Donald Treeback, Chris Avit Avedesian. Donald hasn't changed a bit, and what starts as a simple favor turns into a long van ride into their past. Sounds kind of like parts of uh, of um, how to succeed Garden in the... State. What Garden oh. State? No, I was going to say. Um, oh, what was the Michael J. Fox movie? Which one? Uh, not Big City. What was the Michael J. Fox movie? Not the Secret of My Success. No, I don't see the. I don't yeah. see the correlation. I'm going to go fresh. It's a dark comedy with indie film cred. Yeah, I'll go indie film cred on that. Okay, we have Lavender with Abby Cornish, Diego Klattenhoff, Justin Long, and Dermot Mulrooney. Or Mulrooney, whatever. Mulrooney. Mulrooney. When a photographer, Abby Cornish, suffers severe memory loss after a traumatic accident. Cornish, not accident. Cornish. Cornish, Cornish, whatever. It's not a Cornish game hen. No, there isn't. It, that's a Cornish game hen. Yeah, that's what you, you said, Cornish. I did say Cornish. It's Cornish, though. How do you know? Just read the... Chew your gum. I don't have gum. <laughs> don't throw shit at me, jackass. Ah, when a photographer, Abby Cornish, 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 whatever, suffers severe memory loss after a traumatic accident, strange clues amongst her photos suggest that she may be responsible for the deaths of family members she never knew she had. Justin Long plays a psychiatrist who helps her who helps her recover her lost memories. I think we spent more time debating her last name than you spent reading the description. Probably. Rotted. Yes. <laughs> get look to see get what I ter- I get to read. Oh goody. My solid my in Scientology movie, Rob Alter, Tom Cruise, 
Pax de la Huerta, and Luis Thoreau. Ow! Jackass. Ha 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 ha. Inspired by the church's use of filming techniques and aided by ex-members of the organization, Luis Thoreau, or is it Louis Thoreau? Who cares? Uses actors to replace some incidents people claim they experience as members in an attempt to better understand the way it operates. In a bizarre twist, it becomes clear that the church is also making a film about Louis Thoreau. Suffused with a good dose of humor and moments worthy of a Hollywood script, my, Scient- my Scientology movie is in fiction. I'm going fresh. Yeah, documentary cred. I actually thought it was going to be like a parody movie, like eh. disaster movie or something like that. All right. Anyway, next we have Wolves, starring Carla Gugino, Michael Shannon, Taylor John Smith, and Zazie Beetz. Anthony, Taylor John Smith, is a standout player on his Manhattan High School's basketball team with seemingly everything going for him. A killer three-point shot, a loving girl for, girlfriend, Zazie Beetz, and a chance at a scholarship to Cornell. But Anthony's dreams of playing college ball are jeopardized by his volatile father, Michael Shannon, a hard-drinking writer whose compulsive gambling threatens to derail the lives of both his wife, Carla Gugino, and son. Though it goes against his nature, Anthony must summon the strength to step out from his father's shadow and reclaim his future. She doesn't sound Good bad. actors. This could, this could We're going to go fresh. fresh. Yeah. That could be fresh. We'll take it. To Flixer. Dun-dun-dun. Yeah. Logan, 94%. Of course. The Shack, 12%. 13%, sorry. Before wrong. I Fall, 69%. We were wrong on that one. Table 19, you got the square, 20%. Ha ha ha. The Last Word, Rodden. Uh, cat Fight, Fresh. We got that one wrong. Really? 72%. People like that? Donald Cried, 86% Fresh. Lavender, 38% Rodden. What do I need? Um, burlesque. <sighs> burlesque. Does it get booby cred? Heart of the Glitter Tribe. Um, f- no, three reviews, all fresh. I'm going to go fresh. No. Uh, okay, sure. My Scientology movie. 93% fresh. Wolves. Dun dun dun. Rodden. Forty two percent. Okay. Alright. So you can find us online on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Google Play Music. Please download, like and well you're already downloaded. Like and review us on there. Helps us out. Um, tweet us at Citizen Ho Pod, email us at dumbass at citizen dot com, Facebook dot com slash citizen ho, Instagram at citizen ho pod, um, and that's about it. I'm Scott. I'm Kevin. Be excellent to each other. Bye-bye. Station.